Welcome folks, I am Jabby Kuwait, joined by Achara Kirk. Hi guys. I really, really wanted to react to this when I heard about it surfacing on the YouTubes and then Greg went and did it first, I'm like, damn it. And so anyway, his is out and it's doing quite well in the view count in terms of like, uh, in the views. And so we're gonna look at Game of Thrones cast react to season eight script finale. This comes from Tuzanet, the YouTube channel. I don't, yeah. So it's a very random place for that to appear. Uh, but thank you to Tuzanet for putting this out. Let's check this out. Here we go. That's cute. Aww. What's she throwing away? Fake scripts? Or just... I don't know. Scripts that they've used, or scripts that are old, maybe? <laughs> oh, catering! Oh. That's the exciting part. Yeah. Like, is there food? I'm there. It's so weird to see them in normal clothes. Yeah. Winterfell begins heavily adapted, believe it or not, for read-through purposes. <laughs> the Night King turns and sees Jon coming for him. Is this going to be an epic fight? No. The Night King raises his arms slowly. Jon knows what that means. The dead begin to rise. Jorah the Andal battles on. He has been slashed and stabbed, pummeled and pierced, but somehow he keeps fighting. Whites plunge their knives into him. He takes more punishment than Hodor took at the door, than Beric took in the Great Hall, and still somehow Jorah stands and defends his queen. Danny tries to rouse Jorah, oh but he is gone. Yeah. Exterior wow. Godswood, the Night King walks with methodical, terrifying calm. He stops before Bran and raises his sword to strike, but something is hurtling toward him out of the darkness. Arya. <laughs> She vaults off a pile of dead whites, leaps at the Night King, and she plunges the dagger up through the Night King's armor, and the Night King shatters. Wildlings <laughs> and northerners have gathered around John. I saw him riding that thing. We all did. No, no. I saw him riding that thing. <laughs> That's right, you saw it. I did, you did. <laughs> That's why we all agreed to follow him. Dragonstone Beach, night. Grey Worm leads Varys, hands bound down the beach. I told you what would happen if you betrayed me. You did. Lord Varys, I, Daenerys of House Targaryen, <coughs> first of my name, breaker of chains and mother of dragons, sentence you to die. Cars. Drogon spews fire on him, but we don't watch our old friend burn. Instead, we see the reactions of those who knew him. Tyrion is heartbroken. Jon is disturbed. Grey Worm sees this as the just execution well, of really traitor. Did she sound like someone who's done fighting? She's a conqueror. She liberated the people of Slaver's Day. She liberated the people of King's Landing. Our queen's nature is fire and blood. Standing before the Iron Throne, Danny steps forward and kisses the man she loves. A perfect kiss. Their eyes closed, his hand behind her head, her hand on his cheek. Danny's eyes open suddenly as she draws a sharp breath. John's eyes open as well, already filling with tears. For a moment, neither moves, as if moving will make this real. We see John with his hand still on the hilt of the dagger he just lodged in Danny's heart. Her strength leaves her, and she collapses to the marble. He keeps her in his arms, and she falls kneeling down to the floor beside her. He looks down at what he's done, terrible and necessary. End of Game of Thrones. Woo! 
Um, wow. Yeah. It seems like a lot of them kind of came to the table read and maybe hadn't read it before. So it was super shocking. Like, Kit Harrington was so upset. That was... Woo. I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed seeing their response to it because it, like, it gave it more... Somehow that gave it more weight and more gravity. I don't know. Like, I enjoyed that more than I, than I enjoyed the last episode. Between that what was recorded and the final actual filming. I'm like, I'm wondering how much changes were made. A lot. Because the kill, when he kills her, was supposed to be the end the of the end. show. Yeah. And a whole lot more was tacked on or, or not tacked on, but added. And so I'm like, okay, well, what, what else was shifted around? Like, was it always planned to be six episodes? Who knows when this was shot, right? Like this, this video was shot ages ago, well before they even probably announced that it was gonna be six episodes. So I'm wondering like in the, st the planning stages, how long it was before they got there around reading this because it feels like there was more there. You see how everyone is cheering when Arya came out and got the Night King? Like, I feel like some stuff got really compressed. For it to elicit that moment in all of them means that they collectively felt good about it. They had a different experience than we did is what I'm trying to say. That's the thing from table read to final product, a lot can change. Right. And it's different when you're reading it at the table because you're not actually at the location, you don't have all the effects in place. It's just you and your friends and you're reading and you're having a good time. If anything, what I love the most about this video was the sense of camaraderie yeah. between all of the cast and the writers and just everyone involved and, and you really do get that strong sense of what they're saying, that they are family. And if you've ever worked on a play or anything with a group of people for a really long time, it does feel like that. And they've been together for like eight, years, eight nine, well, nine years. Nine years, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a lot of time to spend with these people. I did appreciate seeing that as well. I mean, you saw them holding each other. You see the way yeah. Emily Clark looked at him when she saw his, I can't remember the actor's name, Jon Snow's reaction. Kit Harrington. Kit Harrington, yeah. I don't know why his name left my brain all of a sudden. She sees him and like her response to him, it's real. It's so real, like the just his feeling. I guess that's why it moved me more than anything that happened in the show. Like the only thing in all of Game of Thrones, the only time I ever was moved to tears at all was during, I think during Tyrion's speech to Jaime. Yeah. At one point. I, I think that was it and it was in this season. I think I, I was moved to tears in many parts in Game of Thrones. The bit where Varys dies, like you can sense his frustration. He like just literally closed the script and pushed it aside and- Well, he has made no qualms about you know, sharing his feelings about the show. Right. He has been very vocal about what has frustrated him. I forgot, he wanted a reunion between him and I think Littlefinger at some point or something like that. Like he wanted more from, but I mean, he's he's an actor. Yeah, he, you know, he's, of course. he's playing a part, so what he wants is ultimately irrelevant, you know. I get his frustration, I think we all do. And it seems like collectively, a lot of the cast was frustrated. I, there's a lot of uh, projecting, I think, going on though, like, because there are people who have collected these videos going, look at all the Game of Thrones actors and how they felt about it. It's like, we don't actually know what they felt. They didn't overtly say anything. Yeah. But there's like this assumption based on like Tyrion when, when he was interviewed, uh, P Peter Dinklage. He's going through the process of saying how it's the best show ever, it's the, the best seasons, the, the best, uh, you know, the final season's the best season, etc. People have projected that it's disingenuous and it's disingenuous on purpose. Like he's deliberately saying it with such a flat tone because he was lying. That's something that has been interpreted in that collection of, of clips. Amelia Clark goes, Best season ever, haha. <laughs> like this awkward laugh. I saw some interview with her, or I read an interview with her saying that she would actually be open to do to doing a, a redo of the final season and she has ideas about how she would love to see it go. I hated that she did that because it made me slightly optimistic that they would actually go and do a, a redo of the no, season. No, why that, would you? 
Because it was terrible. The last season was terrible. <sighs> you had your chance, you know. You had all this time to make this epic season. You took extra time to make it epic and you didn't get it right. Well, I'm sorry, it's over. You can't just go back and be like, actually, let me just rewind and redo. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock remade his own movie. You know, it's possible to do, it's just not common. You just don't see it happen all that often. I get what you're saying. With a lot of art, it's like you made it, you tried, you move on. Yeah, right? do but something I, better next time. But I feel like Game of Thrones is not like that. It's It stands above that rule. Star Wars and Harry Potter can stand above that rule. I feel like you can totally remake these things and make them better the second time around. Give it a shot, you know, give it a go again. Titanic was a remake. They remade that movie like seven times. Really? It's not James Cameron re re making his own movie, but I'm saying we have remakes. 310 to Yuma was a remake. Oh yeah, and but so, I mean they're not remade with the same actors. Spider-Man was was uh, what do you call it? Rebooted within the sp like twice in the span of ten years. Yeah, but once again with a different cast. Who cares? Like just go for it again. Give it a shot again. Just try again. You just keep trying, and like and then and then audiences will get spoiled, and anytime stuff doesn't go the way that they wanted, they'll want to rewrite. Every Everything. Everything and, will be re rewritten. This yes. will open a Pandora's box. No, this is the best Pandora's box ever because it'll keep those actors working forever. It'll keep those writers employed, gainfully employed. It'll keep the, everyone who's worked on the show, well, maybe not the writers. Because <laughs> they're the first ones that are going to go. They're going to be like, we don't want those. We want new writers who can understand what needs to be done here and aren't just like keen to get out. I was reading or I watched somewhere that George R. R. Martin was like, or there were talks that this could have gone on for 13 seasons or something like that. I and feel like it could have gone on for a lot longer. Just even things like the killing of the Night King. I was so shocked that that ended in one episode. What? This, this epic battle that you've been leading up to over seasons, you're just gonna wrap it up in one episode because Arya Stark comes along and, you know, just happens to stab him at the right moment. There's a great uh, video I saw on YouTube just the other day, I, like a lesson in writing, I think is the name of the channel. I, I forget, I'll have a link in the description, but this guy thoroughly breaks down everything wrong with the final season and how it completely screws up everything that was set up and what it should have done, where it could have explored, and all the themes that it was establishing and how it completely went against that in the wrong kind of way. Mm -hmm. And it w and it went for the bad kind of surprises. Like, it wanted to surprise you, but it went about it the wrong way. Like, Arya killing the Night King, for instance, yeah. or who's chosen to be king, didn't make sense either. Ultimately, the culmination of the show is that women don't know how to handle things. When you boil it down, women are emotional and crazy and don't know how to handle things. So the appropriate person person to have chosen would have been Sansa to be queen. She's had the strongest, like, what was the, is the word fortitude and strength to make it this far, and she's smart. So, well, right. I mean, that's debatable, but she would have been a good, a better choice, I think. To go against the theme of women can't get things right. Exactly. I got you, yeah. okay, cool. Yeah, because ultimately it was Bran who was chosen. Broken dude, he was chosen while women were messing it up yeah. for eight years, according to the show. I mean, that's the ultimate culmination, unfortunately. I, I didn't... I didn't quite crystallize that that thought until I watched the video. I'm like, oh my god, that makes so much sense. That is an interesting notion. Like, that hadn't crossed my mind at all. But Robert Baratheon was a man and he was screwing up way before the women got involved. And sure. all the men before that. I get it. But like, thematically, if you look at the majority of the show, what you have orchestrating everything is Cersei. But that came later. And, and Daenerys. That's during what the, majority, the show became. Yeah, during the, yeah. the majority of the show was that, though, I feel like. Cersei was like... Yeah, the I mean, there was Cersei. And Daenerys' rise to power. Yeah, so it was there was ultimately, Marjorie as well. But ultimately, I, it was a battle between Daenerys and, and Cersei, Cersei. Yeah. ultimately. And neither of them sorted it out. They were both corrupt and, not corrupt, but they both were crazy, ultimately. And it went to a dude in the end. So, anyway, this is not my opinion. This is an opinion I, I've absorbed from someone else. And I actually, you know, I liked it. I'm, I'm not saying it's correct, but it certainly feels like a, a strong, um, thought. You know? Yeah, I mean, if you look at it that way, then it is interesting. Like, what are they saying about women? Right. Women are not fit to rule. I mean, broken... they overtly they overtly say it in the show. It fits with the times of like, well, a man would be someone that everyone can get behind. I mean, like in the medieval era, like, right. yeah, you know, yeah. I don't know. But anyway, I enjoyed this. Yes. This conversation kind of derailed, derailed it completely from this video. <laughs> but I mean, it's certainly, you know, those feelings are still there. And I think that I feel like this last season of, of Game of Thrones is gonna be just as controversial 
as the final episode of The Sopranos for like years to come. Up until like the last few years, people were still talking about the ending of Sopranos because it's so controversial. Because it's so like, what? Why did you? So anyways, right. you guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Be sure to check out Achara Kirk on the social media as well as this guy over here, The Jabs. Um, Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. Check out our other reactions, reviews, short films, vlogs. I'm Jabby Koi. This is Achara Kirk. Peace out.